after the break, the future of Fannie and Freddie when no one thought there would be one. We'll speak with William Bartman, former chairman of Commercial Financial Services. He's now CEO of Bartman Enterprises. That interview next when Bloomberg News continues. Well, stocks are rising for the third trading session in a row, buoyed by growing optimism about a global economy. That's a big change in sentiment from a year ago when the U.S. government seized control of mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, marking the beginning of a bear market in the broader market. The S&P 500 index peaked that day at 1268 and continued to fall until mid-March of 2010. The S&P 500, the yearly chart we just saw, but it is now trading trading up seven-tenths of one percent right now at 1,024. Joining us with more on today's market and the future of Fannie and Freddie is William Bartman, former chairman of Commercial Financial Services, which specialized in distressed assets. He's now CEO of Bartman Enterprises, which advises investors about bad debt. Mr. Bartman, welcome to Bloomberg News. Well, thank you, Mark. Sir, uh, what are you seeing in the future for Fannie and Freddie, uh, given the information we've just uh, given our viewers? Well, given the, the current information that the market's actually, you know, perhaps what we'll call a dead cat bounce, I really don't think it's going to be a, a very sustained bounce, that the government has two bad choices. Either they let Fannie and Freddie smolder or they find a way to dispose of it. And right now with all the health care issues that are going on for the Obama administration, you know, I think it's a part of that sleeping dog lie theory that I think they're going to hope that uh, they can just ride the market out for a little while. Is there an opportunity for investors to make money here? Well, absolutely there is, and especially if the Fannie and Freddie are broken up into a good bank and a bad bank. And that's one of the current uh, arguments now being made on the street, is that they should be broken up into a good bank and a bad bank. The good bank offered to risk capital. There are plenty of buyers who will take that arbitrage. And then the bad bank being turned over essentially to the FDIC, a la the way they did the Resolution Trust Corporation back in the 80s and the 90s. They had the expertise to handle it, and quite frankly, the tax taxpayers could use the money. Well, you don't think that they can, in your words, earn their way out of the problem. Why not? Oh, the, the, the math is really pretty simple. Over the last 17 years, Freddie Freddy and Freddie Freddy combined have earned $5.5 billion per year on a, on a combined basis. They're $260 billion in the hole. Just doing the simple math, assuming the future does look like the past, it would take them 47 years to break even. Now, that's longer than most taxpayers want, to want us to take. And, Glenn, Mark, we, we, the taxpayers right now, have essentially an 80% position in Fannie and Freddie, and I think it's time for people to get their money back. You know, this uh, year anniversary of Lehman Brothers collapse is coming up. What did we learn? Well, sadly, we, I don't think we've learned very much. I, I think there was so much irrational exuberance going on prior to, to Lehman falling that I think what we, we probably end up learning is a lesson that the government maybe didn't want us to learn, and that's that there is no bank too big to fail. Now, granted, when Lehman crashed, it reverberated throughout the industry. But as you've just acknowledged, a year later, we're still standing, we're still here, arguably, arguably, we have a better system today than we even had then. Now, that was at a terrible cost and a great loss to, to an awful lot of people, and I'm sorry that it happened. But I think what we're about to hear now from, from Kumo is maybe we're not done seeing the too big, too big to fail theory that maybe now we'll see it with Bank of America. What did Wall Street learn? <laughs> Wall Street has a relatively short collective memory. Uh, they, they tend to learn only what's in front of the, the current batch of MBAs, and, and I don't say that in a pejorative way. Uh, they are, quite frankly, a relatively short, uh, a short learning curve institution. Uh, they tend to forget the lessons of history. I mean, everything that we have gone through in the last 10 years, we've seen this movie before. This has all happened before, and we didn't learn the lessons the last time. What are your predictions for the future? Oh, I, I am, I'm sorry to be a, a naysayer or, or a bear or a negative person, but it's kind of, you know, and nobody has quoted Spiro Wagner in 20 years. Let me paraphrase him. You know, back then, Spiro became quite famous for a phrase of the nattering nabobs of negativity. 
Well, now I think we have the nattering nabobs of positivity where everybody's looking for any ray of hope, any ray of optimism to right. tell us that the market is now better. I don't think it is better. I think we're in for a sustained loss. There's another thousand banks that are going to fail in the next year. Right. That will have a cataclysmic effect on our economy. William Bartman of Bartman Enterprises joining us from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Sure. Uh, sir, I wish we had more time. We'll try to have you back. Thanks so much.